The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers wants to ensure that you and boaters like you are aware of the basics concerning locks and dams, as well as the correct way to safely lock through. You as a boater are responsible for your own safety. For this reason, you should know before you go. This video will provide you and other recreational boaters with an overview of the purposes and types of dams, parts of a lock, how to safely and properly lock through, including how to safely approach and leave the lock chamber, what to do while you are in the lock chamber, and conditions that could affect your locking through process. Dams serve many purposes. These functions include flood damage reduction, hydropower production, navigation, and water supply. There are two types of dams that can be associated with a lock, which include a fixed crest and a movable crest. A fixed crest dam is one that does not move. Water often flows over the top of the dam. This dam is basically a concrete wall across the river, which keeps the channel deep enough for navigation. A low head dam is a particularly dangerous type of fixed crest dam because the currents below the dam can trap a boat and pull it into the dam. These currents are extremely difficult to see from the upstream side. A movable crest dam is one where the gates, for example, tainter, wicket, navigable pass, roller, or sluice can be raised or lowered, depending on river flow conditions. High, turbulent, and unpredictable currents located upstream and downstream from the dam should be avoided. You should never approach the dam portion of the structure, because even though it might look safe, the results could be deadly. Navigation charts provide valuable information for the recreational boater, including the location of dams and other structures in the waterways. Navigation charts or directions on how to purchase them are available by searching for them on the Internet. Before boating on a river that will include locking through, you should know the five basic parts of a lock. They include the approach and waiting areas, gates, chamber, guide walls above and below the chamber, and the exit area. There are three different types of gates. Miter gates are gates that point upriver when they are closed. The weight of the water and machinery keeps the gates closed. Miter gates are used when the water above the lock is always higher than the water below the lock. Sector gates are used when the water level may be higher on either side of the lock. Sector gates appear pie slice shaped and are held closed mechanically. Drop gates drop below the water level and boats go right over the top of the gate. Although there are differences between locks, the concept for locking through is the same. When approaching a lock, there are several factors you should know to ensure your safety and the safety of your passengers. First and foremost, life jackets should be worn by everyone on the boat. A life jacket will only work if you wear it. Most people who drown are not wearing a life jacket. Do you think their families wish they would have put it on? If you will not wear it for yourself, then wear it for the ones who love you. Pay careful attention to your surroundings and watch out for other boaters and barge traffic. Stay clear of large vessels such as towboats and barges. Turbulence and prop wash created by larger vessels can cause your boat to capsize or create enough wave action to throw you and your passengers overboard. Boaters should be aware that towboat and barge tow traffic are required to stay within the marked channel. A towboat and barge may require up to a mile to a mile and a half to stop. You must get out of their way and stay out of their way. Do not anchor in the river channel while waiting to lock through, or position your boat between a tow and any fixed item such as a wall or pier. 
contact the lock for the locations of waiting areas. Be able to recognize restricted areas associated with locks and dams. Buoys, markers, and signs are used to mark restricted areas. It is recommended that while boating, you use a navigation chart to find these dangerous areas. Buoys and markers may not always be in the water. Signs may be damaged or vandalized. Currents around the lock and dam can be extremely dangerous and unpredictable. Swimming and fishing are strictly prohibited around the lock and dam or within the lock chamber. Locks have been constructed and sized for commercial traffic, but they can be used by everyone, including recreational boaters. Certain vessels have higher priority when it comes to locking through. U.S. government vessels, including military craft and mail boats, have precedence of passage over all other vessels. Priority goes to other vessels in the following order. Commercial passenger boats, commercial cargo carrying boats, commercial fishing boats, and last but not least, recreation boats. Recreation boats may be required to wait their turn or may be allowed to lock through with other craft. You must signal the lock operator to request permission to enter the lock. Know how to properly signal a lock and what method to use before you go. Methods vary depending on the location and may include pull cords, radio, telephone, verbal communication, horn signals, intercom, and loudspeakers. You may only enter a lock after you have been given permission to do so by lock personnel. The lock operator may use traffic signal lights or an air horn to give permission for boaters to enter the lock. These traffic light signals have the same meaning as roadway traffic signals. Green means you can approach the lock under full control and enter the lock. Red means you must stop and cannot enter the lock. At some locks, the signaling system may be different, so know before you go. Enter the lock slowly enough that you do not create a wake or any wave action. Please follow all instructions and directions given by the lock personnel during the entire process of locking through. Your courtesy and patience toward lock personnel and other boaters will be appreciated. It will also make the process faster. While locking through, make sure that you and all of your passengers are wearing life jackets. Reduce noise levels by turning down radios and avoiding horseplay. This step is essential so you can hear verbal, radio, intercom, or loudspeaker communication from lock personnel. You should be aware of the lock's operating hours and schedule. Some locks will only lock through recreation boats at specific times. Others are open at only certain hours, while others are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Know before you go. If your boat appears to be unsafe in some manner, you will not be permitted to lock through. Inspect your boat to make sure it is operating properly and that you have all required safety equipment before you go. While in the lock chamber, turn off your boat engine to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless gas which can kill you in minutes. You and all of your passengers must remain on your boat. Keep your hands, arms and legs inside the boat. To prevent the possibility of fire, do not smoke while in the lock chamber. If you do not have proper mooring lines, you may not be permitted to lock through. You may be required to have two lines, one at the bow and one at the stern. Generally, 75 feet of line at the bow and at the stern will be sufficient for a recreational vessel. Some locks provide mooring lines. Know before you go. Make sure there is a mooring ring or similar device on your boat that you can use with a mooring line. Only tie your boat to a floating mooring bit. 
Do not tie your boat to any fixed part of the lock because the results could be deadly. Depending on whether the lock chamber is filling or emptying, your boat could be pulled under or out of the water. In addition, you and your passengers could be thrown out of the boat. If a floating mooring bit is not available, hold the lines. If you have an inboard outboard engine on your boat, for safety reasons, you should run the blower for at least four to five minutes before starting. Remain moored until instructed to leave the chamber. Leave the lock slowly enough that you do not create a wake or any wave action. Remain at no wake speed until clear of the no wake zone. The no wake zone is marked with either buoys or signs. If there are no markings, please keep to a no wake speed until you are past the concrete lock walls. The rule is first in, first out, unless directed differently by the lock staff. Stay clear of the dam and any entering vessel traffic. High water and weather conditions. The regulations concerning personal watercraft and non-motorized watercraft, the amount and type of traffic, and night lockage are all conditions that may affect your locking through experience. Therefore, know before you go. The experience of locking through can open up a whole new world of possibilities. You can travel from St. Paul, Minnesota to New Orleans, Louisiana on the mighty Mississippi River, travel along the beautiful Columbia River in the Northwest, or spend the day on the Illinois or Ohio River with family and friends. Locking through might look difficult and appear confusing, but it is actually an easy and safe process as long as you do some research and know before you go.